Intro to Latin, part 10, four loops. I'm just gonna put together a front panel real quickly here of a base and an exponent, and we're gonna write a program in the block diagram that will figure out this value. Now in the past, I've typically used while loops because they're really good for doing something uh, over and over without knowing the exact number of times you want to do them. A for loop, on the other hand, you want to use when you know the exact number of times you want to perform a task. In this case, the exact number of times I want to perform this operation is equivalent to the exponent, which I will wire into the n. The n is the number of times you want the, the for loop to run. So I want to keep track of the product. I'm going to use a shift register so I can multiply each time in the loop and keep track of the new value with each iteration. So the first time it happens, it'll be 1 times the base. And then that value will get passed back to the beginning of the loop and then multiply by the base again. Wire this into the answer. And now let's test it out. 2 to the third power is very easy. Let's run it with highlight execution to follow the data flow. You see that the first time the value comes in is 1 times 2 is 2. Comes back to the beginning is 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 in the last loop. So 2 cubed is 8. Let's try 5 cubed without highlight execution and it'll work right away. See that it's 125. Let's write another program quickly. This one using an array which is a list. In this case it's going to be a list of numeric controls. A bunch of numbers that I want to find the mean or average of. For loops work really really well with arrays. What we're going to do is use the for loop to find the sum of everything in the array. You see that the n has to always be wired, but in this case we're wiring an array. The for loop is smart enough to know that we do not need to give the n, that we want to work off of every value in the array one at a time. That is why it's called an auto-indexed tunnel. It's indexing each element of the array for you. You could turn that off if you wanted. I'm going to create a constant. That'll be the start of the sum. And each element in the array will be added to the sum. I'm going to replace that tunnel with a shift register so it keeps updated. After everything has been added inside the for loop, I'm going to need to divide that by the total number and you can actually take the value from the end because it knows how long the array is. Disable that indexing because we don't want an array, we want a single value and then pass that to the mean. If we check it out, there is the mean in the front panel. 